In today's video, I'm going to be outlining 18 different strategies that you could be using in your classroom to make content more comprehensible for your English language learners. Most teachers think, well, I speak slowly, I use a lot of pictures, but there are about 18 and I'm just going to be scratching the surface of different ways you can help your students in your classroom starting tomorrow. I'm your host, Dr. Hemphill, and I'm so happy that you decided to join me another week for another video. If you hit that notification bell, you will be notified every week when I upload a new video. The first accommodation that can be used in a classroom is the use of language objectives. Teachers are very familiar with the use of content objectives, which is the what, but language objectives tells us the how. For example, a teacher can be talking about parallelograms and wanting their students to identify different types. The how can be, well, a student can listen to a teacher's description of different types of parallelograms in order to draw them. And that way the student is utilizing the language function of listening. Because we always, for every lesson that we teach, we want to think about the listening, the speaking, the reading, and the writing. Second accommodation is simplifying language. Oftentimes we like to use idioms and different types of jokes, but it goes way over English language learners' heads. Because remember, they're trying to understand basic social language, but they're also trying to understand academic language. A third accommodation is to make sure that you revisit any content that has been taught in different modalities in different ways. And this is not just for English language learners, this is for all our students. Because research shows that if a student is repeatedly um, seeing the same thing or content, or revisiting something that they have learned but in different ways, whether it's through the kinesthetic or if it's uh, practicing it through a game or working with a partner. Just additional opportunities for you to reach teach the content is going to take you a long, long way with your English language learners. Fourth accommodation is working in small groups. I know that many times when I have taught a lesson, if I then take a group of students and work with them in a smaller group to focus in on one specific aspect of the larger picture. It really helps them a lot while the other students are doing something that is more independent, maybe on the computer or working with a partner. But having that one-on-one -on -one time or small group uh, setting really helps them because they you can really address and see where is it that they need reteaching or to uh, look at the lesson from a different angle. A fifth accommodation is allowing students to work with another partner and providing opportunities for them to do peer tutoring or peer teaching. If you pair that student, your ELL student, with a student who has a stronger language dominance with English or whatever the target language is, sometimes they just have a knack of teaching it in a different way that we've never thought of that makes it comprehensible. So I would also make sure that you allow opportunities for that as well. A sixth accommodation is allowing the use of manipulatives. Of course, it depends on the language proficiency level of your English language learner and you need to look at the can-do descriptors to see where that's appropriate, but using manipulatives really helps conceptualize the content in a way that sometimes just listening to the, the lesson or interacting with it in different modalities just doesn't cut it for them. A seventh accommodation that is very, very helpful for English language learners is the use of visual aids. This is so helpful because as they're trying to navigate the complexities of the target language and there's so much information being thrown at them, when they can pair it with anything that is visual or, and it doesn't even have to be when you're teaching it to them, but when they're actually doing the I do part of the lesson and they're applying the knowledge, just having a graphic organizer or some type of visual aid that will help them to understand how to get the task accomplished is extremely helpful. That leads me to strategy number eight, which is graphic organizers. There's so many different graphic organizers. You can find one for summarizing, for comparing contrast, for listing um, different concepts. But graphic organizers is an excellent tool that allows English language learners to organize all of the content and to really conceptualize the type of uh, activity that you're doing. If it's compare and contrast, they can clearly see in a Venn diagram 
on this left side I'm comparing on the right side I'm contrasting in the middle what is similar and it just helps to really make it more visual and more clear in their mind. A ninth accommodation is the seating arrangement. Proximity to the teacher or proximity sitting closer to a peer tutor in the classroom. That way they are understanding and they have the access for that support immediately and allows them not to get lost in all of the information that gets taught in the classroom. A tenth accommodation is having the student have a dictionary or some sort of running file of all the vocabulary that they're learning. So whether it could be in an interactive notebook or just a personal notebook that they just list all vocabulary and pictures. And it can be organized by content because they are receiving so much information that having it all piled in one way and organized in a way that makes sense for them is so useful because they can return to it time and time again. A 12th accommodation is incorporating group work and cooperative learning in a classroom, which is one of my favorites. And a lot of teachers think, well, you know, I don't know if this is gonna work because they don't know the language yet and it, it's very limited. How much can they participate? You will be amazed at how much input that they're getting from their peers in terms of the academic language and social language and giving each student a role. So if an English language learner is in their first year of learning a language, they can be assigned as the person who draws uh, a piece of text or whatever it is that you are having them do. But giving them a role that is at their level will not only help them, but it will also help their peers realize, wow, they can do something. They are able and they are capable. The 13th accommodation is just providing them with prompts, with highlighted text, with anything that is already prepared, notes, um, with graphics. Um, also, you can give them sentence stems, but giving them something that is already pre-done that they just have to then add their part to it. And if you have not watched my video on sentence frames, uh, I will link that above so that you can see that because it's such a helpful tool that really does, I, I have seen in my experience, gets underutilized in many classrooms. The 14th accommodation is using the, the student's native language. And I know this can be controversial. Some teachers do not believe that students should be distracted by their native language when they're learning a target language. But if you use a word-to-word -word dictionary for complex words, they have that at their disposal. Google Translate has its uh, uses, I would not encourage that they translate complete sentences, just words at a time if necessary. And also, it allows them, for example, if the target language is very similar in its structure and it has a lot of cognates and it's transferable uh, to their native language, why not? Because it just builds up. The stronger their native language is, the stronger they're, and faster that they're going to learn the target language and if you have not seen my videos on cognates uh, I will link that above because I have found that this has been extremely strongly helpful for my else. Accommodation 15 is to teach in chunks. It's so important because if you're giving too much information then their effective filter just goes up and it's just too much information that you're letting in. So if you chunk important information bit by bit with giving ample breaks in between or teaching them in, in a different day will really help the students and they it's better to go deeper into the information than teaching all at once and losing them at the end. You'll notice that they'll be more attentive and more apt to stay with you if you chunk the information. Accommodation 16 is providing opportunities for frequent check-ins for comprehension. Whether it's a thumbs up, thumbs down or holding a green paper or red uh, paper indicating whether they understood or not will really help. I do this a lot with my English language learners and I have found many times where I think that they're with me and they're not and a lot of times they'll say yes just to please you so letting them know that it's okay for them not to know that you will reteach. Commendation 17 is to provide students with rubrics. Uh, this helps them to know what is expected and what you're looking for and it gives them a clearer picture, it's more detailed, and there's no questions about, well, how come I got this grade, or how can I do well, or am I doing well? And making them simplified, and of course, if you need to use a picture representation of a rubric, 
for a student who is in their first year of learning a language, then do so. A rubric can look so many different ways. And if you would like me to do a video on rubrics, I'll be more than happy to do this. I have received some questions on the use of rubrics in, in English language learning. And accommodation number 18, drum roll, is the use of simplified instructions and directions. You don't want to use very complicated, this goes back to the instruction in itself, what I was explaining earlier, is you want to make sure that directions on paper is explained in a very simple way so that students understand what you expect of them. So there you have it. Those are the 18 accommodations. As I mentioned before, those aren't the only. There are so many others. And if I have missed one that you use in your classroom, please comment below. I would love to hear what other accommodations are listed, not just to hear how you're doing in your classroom, but anybody else who's viewing this video can also see what other accommodations have been successful in other English language learner classrooms around the United States and the world. Thank you so much for watching. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading your comments. And if you're not aware, I do have an Instagram uh, page that I have. It's under the same name, The Language Lady, and I also have a Facebook page. That way we can interact, and if you feel more comfortable, message me directly. I would love to hear from you. I thoroughly enjoy it. See me next week for another video on this channel. Same, same day and same time. <laughs>